Gottfried Feder was born on January 27, 1883, in Würzburg, in the German Empire. He was the son of civil servant Hans Feder and his wife, Matilda Feder. After studying in classical gymnasiums in Ansbach and Munich, he studied engineering in Berlin and Zurich, in Switzerland. After this, he founded a construction company in 1908 that was active in Bulgaria, and built a number of official buildings. He claimed that he studied financial politics and economics from 1917 onward, but there is no evidence to back up this claim. He developed a hostility towards wealthy bankers during World War I, and wrote a manifesto on breaking the shackles of interest, in 1919. This was soon followed by the founding of a task force, dedicated to those goals that demanded a nationalization of all banks and an abolition of interest. That year, Feder, together with Anton Drexler, Dietrich Eckart and Karl Harrer, were involved in the founding of the German Workers' Party, or DAP. Adolf Hitler met him in the summer of 1919, while he was in an anti-Bolshevik training course at Munich University, funded by the army and organized by Major Karl May, and Feder became his mentor in finance and economics. He helped to inspire Hitler's opposition to Jewish finance capitalism, delivering political courses alongside Feder was Karl Alexander von Muller, the son of Bavaria's culture minister, who spotted Hitler's public speaking ability, and forwarded his name as a political instructor for the army, an important step in the young Hitler's career. In February 1920, together with Adolf Hitler and Anton Drexler, Feder drafted the 25 points which summed up the party's views and introduced his own anti-capitalist views into the program. When the paper was announced on February 24, 1920, more than 2,000 people attended the rally. In an attempt to make the party more broadly appealing to larger segments of the population, the DAP was renamed in February 1920 to the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or NSDAP more commonly known as the Nazi Party. Feder took part in the party's Beer Hall Putsch in November 1923, and after Hitler's arrest, he remained one of the leaders of the now outlawed party and was elected to the Reichstag in 1924 under the banner of the Nazi Front Organization, the National Socialist Freedom Movement. In 1928, after the ban on the Nazi Party was lifted, he was elected as one of the first 12 Nazi deputies. He served until 1936 representing the electoral constituencies of Chemnitz Vikal from 1924 to 1932, Leipzig from 1932 to 1933, and East Prussia from 1933 to 1936. As a Reichstag deputy, he demanded the freezing of interest rates and dispossession of Jewish citizens. He remained one of the leaders of the anti-capitalist wing of the NSDAP, and published several papers, including National and Social Bases of the German State, in 1920, the program of the NSDAP and its ideological foundations, in 1927, and What Does Adolf Hitler Want, in 1931. In early 1926, Feder played a key role in assisting Hitler to overcome the challenge to his authority presented by the National Socialist Working Association. This was a short-lived group of northern and western German Gauleiters, organized in September 1925 and led by Gregor Strasser, which unsuccessfully sought to amend the 25 points. Around Christmas 1925, Feder obtained a copy of the proposed revision and informed Hitler, as a CEO author of the original 1920 program, Feder felt protective of it, and was furious that an attempt to amend it was underway without either his or Hitler's knowledge. At a meeting of the Working Association in Hanover on January 24, 1926, Feder attended. He wasn't invited, but went but as Hitler's representative. The meeting became heated, with Joseph Goebbels, one of the Working Association leaders, demanding that Feder be ejected, shouting, we don't want any stool pigeons. But a vote was taken and Feder was allowed to stay. The draft program was vigorously debated with Feder raising objections on various points, and in the end, the Sturrisa draft was not approved. On February 14, 
Hitler called a leadership meeting known as the Bamberg Conference, where he forcefully opposed the positions advocated by the Working Association and insisted that the original program be retained intact. Strasser was made to retrieve all copies of the draft program that had been distributed, and Hitler reasserted his authority as Supreme Party leader and stamped out any potential threat from the Working Association, which was formally dissolved later in the year. Gottfried Feder briefly dominated the Nazi Party's official views on financial politics, but after he became chairman of the party's Economic Council in 1931, his anti-capitalist views led to a great decline in financial support from Germany's major industrialists. Following pressure from Albert Vogeler, Gustav Krupp, Friedrich Flick, Fritz Thyssen, Emil Kerdorf and especially Halma Schacht, Hitler decided to move the party away from Feder's economic views. Schacht wrote in their, Magic of Money, that, National Socialist Agitation under the leadership of Gottfried Feder, aimed to curtail private banking and the entire currency system. He further explained that the goal of Feder and his pupils was to destroy their entire, banking and monetary economy, and concludes that he, had to try to steer Hitler away from these destruction conceptions. When Hitler became Chancellor in 1933, he appointed, Federer's State Secretary at the Rye Ministry of Economics in July, an appointment that disappointed Feder, who had hoped for a higher position. Feder continued to write papers, writing, The Fight Against High Finance, in 1933, and The Anti-Semitic, The Jews, in 1933. In 1939, he wrote, The New City. This can be considered an attempt at garden city building through the use of Nazi architecture, he proposed creating agricultural cities of 20,000 people divided into nine autonomous units and surrounded by agricultural areas, each city was to be fully autonomous and self-sufficient, with detailed plans for daily living and urban amenities provided. When Halma Schacht took office as Minister of Economics on August 2, 1934, one of his first actions was to fire Feder from his state secretary post. He then served as Reichskommissar for settlement until December 1934. He was also a member of Hans Frank's Academy for German Law. He later became a professor for settlement policy at the Technische Hochschule Berlin in December 1936, a post he held until he died at the age of 58 in Murnau, in Bavaria, on September 24, 1941.